It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Mr. Hardy Burt, author and correspondent. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Edward J. Thigh, United States Senator from Minnesota. Senator Thigh, we certainly appreciate you coming up from Washington to be with us this evening, sir. And our viewers, of course, uh, remember you as the senior senator from Minnesota and the former governor there. And tonight we would like to ask you first, sir, on this issue of Mr. Boland being sent to uh, Russia, uh, how do you expect to vote on this rather controversial matter, sir? I expect to vote for confirmation. <laughs> and I left the floor this evening, and it had been discussed all afternoon. Well, now, do you regard this, this controversy as a very serious one, as a real threat to the, to the new administration? No, I do not. I do not. In other words, sir, this is, you don't see it as a threat to the unity of the new administration and the Republican Party, which is now in power in Washington. No, I do not recognize it as a threat. Your uh, majority leader and your and the policy committee chairman are on the side of the administration. Senator, everyone, uh, at least most people, the vast majority of people, found it very uh, incredible to believe that a man like Hiss could be guilty of being sub subversive. Do you think there's any chance whatsoever that Boland could turn into another Hiss case, the Boland case into another Hiss case. Well, I cannot believe that Secretary of State Mr. Dulles, having had an opportunity to examine the FBI files, would have stumbled himself into a position such as was found to be with Mr. Hiss. Senator, I just can't believe it. Senator Thigh, you of course represent one of the great farm states in the country. Our viewers are tremendously interested in the farm problem, and particularly in food prices. First of all, sir, can you explain simply for our viewers uh, how you would like to see the Department of Agriculture operate under this administration? I'd like to see the Department of Agriculture operate in this manner, that where it has to do the regulatory work, there it should. Where it is engaged in the animal husbandry, there it should expand its activity. Of course, research is the new field of expansion for the, in the years of tomorrow. The other is that the Department of Agriculture administers the farm support program. The support program is for no other purpose as to, other than to assure the consumers that there's going to be an ample supply of food and fiber for their needs. Are you, are you uh, what we have <laughs> referred to on this program, are you a high support man, an advocate of high supports? You know, my endeavors in all of my public service has been to give the farmer parity. Once in a while, we have to assure him that he can only get 90% of parity, but I've been always endeavored to give him full of parity. Senator, a few uh, days ago, we had on the chronoscope, Congressman Javits, of course, is a big city congressman from New York. Now, it was his contention that uh, this farm subsidy program was a wonderful thing for the farmer, but it worked a hardship on the city consumer. What is your uh, opinion on that? My opinion is simply this, that when you guarantee the farmer on the basics only, that's not the perishables, but the basics, that he's going to receive 90%. Now, basics is corn, wheat, cotton, rice, peanuts, and tobacco. You guarantee him on those, that he's going to have 90% of parity. When you do that, that producer is going to go out and do his utmost to get the production that will assure the consumer an ample supply. And therefore, I, I do not think that it is doing for the producer at the expense of the consumer. It's an assurance for the consumer. You think farm prices will go down despite the subsidy program? No. I mean, not farm prices, but prices to the city consumer. Yes, they're going down now. Uh, beef prices have gone off between 10 and 15 percent, depending on what retail markets you're in in the last month. Do you think that bread will also go down, dairy yes. products, all yes. of the things that our, yes. our viewers uh, buy for them in their market Definitely. baskets? It's on the downward decline at the present time. Uh, uh, 
Uh, when there's a cut to the producer in his price, it takes many weeks into months before it's reflected in the retail market. Senator, I understand that you are against, uh, well, you can say it bureaucracy in government, but against too many people being employed by the government, too much bureaucracy. Is that uh, true? You can have too much of uh, government, yes, sir. And uh, I think government is like everything else, that if you have too many, there is a lack of efficiency. And uh, I believe that some of our agency did become overstaffed. Would that apply to the Department of Agriculture too, sir? Yes, it would. Now, Senator Thigh, uh, it's being said around Washington that the Republican Party, this new administration, is having considerable trouble in actually getting control of the government. Do you believe that's true, sir? Well, there are too many uh, positions where you have classified service and uh, that governs and the people are probably in a policy-making position you and it's difficult <laughs> to have them change their philosophy. You mean that during the previous two administrations, the Roosevelt and Truman administrations, more and more people were, their jobs were covered by civil service? That is true. That and, is true. and do you think that that probably has gone too far I wouldn't say it's gone too far, but I would say that some of the employees do not recognize that there's a new administration and that they should try to endeavor to find out what the policy of the new administration is and then cooperate with all their might. At the present time, I have recognized a few that still thought they should be fighting this administration. Well, you do believe that there are too many people on the government payroll today. I definitely believe that. How, do, how can you eliminate them, Senator, and save the taxpayers some money? It can only be done from the top down, and that the administration has not had sufficient time in their respective agencies of government to have gotten about finding out where the surplus is and in which manner they can eliminate you, it. You wouldn't go around just lopping off bureaus to eliminate employees. In no, other sir, words. because that is ineffective because oftentimes it's the last person that came on the payroll that gets cut off because he has no seniority. Uh -huh. And therein lies the danger of just using the lopping off system. You better start from the top and figure out which one you can dispose of and then dispose of well, it. On, on that question, Senator Thigh, do you find among your constituents that they want the government <laughs> of the United States to get larger or smaller? My constituents, of course, want a reduction in governmental expenditures because only in that manner are they going to have a reduction in their taxes. Well, do you find some of them, however, that want more government service? Once in a while, you know, every time that we graduate another university class or a college class, we just find some folks that are able to write a letter, and they are just writing letters, and they're making certain demands upon government. Let's put it this way, Senator. Are your constituents more in favor of balancing the budget and saving money, <coughs> uh, that is, eliminating government services, or are they more in favor of having taxes cut? The folks would like to see taxes reduced, and we must bring about a tax reduction. You cannot continue extracting in tax dollars from the paying public in the manner that you have in the last few years, but what you're going to dry up venture capital. And if you destroy venture capital, you're going to destroy the opportunity of making a new business. I understand from your business. pronouncements that you believe that we could save quite a good deal of money on the budget this year. Yes, I definitely believe that. How much, sir? I am very hopeful that there can be at least between five and six billion dollar reduction in the overall expenditure of government. And that could mean a tax reduction? That could bring about a balanced budget and then you can proceed to let some of the excess taxes and the other increased income taxes uh, cease as the law intended them. You have the excess going off to lie the first and you have some of the income tax levies that was imposed because of the Korean War that will go off the end of this year. Senator Thigh, some of our viewers will recall that it was the Minnesota delegation, I believe, that tipped the scales finally for General Eisenhower's nomination. And uh, a great deal is being written about some disillusionment spreading as regards the Eisenhower administration. <laughs> Now, uh, are you still a, a strong defender of this new administration? Definitely. Do you feel Definitely. that it's going to make positive accomplishments uh, for the people? It's evident now. 
It's evident in this that you're getting a, a leveling off from the inflationary levels that this government was faced with, and it was a serious threat. By that you mean that money is becoming sounder? Money is becoming sounder. Your retail prices is dropping to the consumer. You have at the present time the highest employment ever in history, and it's taken place in the month of February. And, and that you have a general firming up of what was an inflationary threat only a matter of a year or so ago. How about the conflict with Russia, Senator? The conflict with Russia is very serious, and with this new administration, no one knows what's going to happen over in Russia. And I think that that was the one reason why they were so anxious to get an ambassador over. In other words, you're telling our, our viewers that as far as domestic policy and as <coughs> promises to the voters on domestic issues, you feel that the Eisenhower administration has kept faith with, with, with the voters. I definitely believe it. Look at your labor field. And, and the administration has only been in office two months, but you, you've had a relatively solid firming up of the labor situation. But, but in, in, the, in this difficult field of foreign policy, uh, ending the Korean War, for instance, you think that, uh, that it's in that field that the administration has yet to produce? Well, they uh, couldn't possibly do much in two months. You think they should be more aggressive in Korea, Senator? I, I would not say that they should be more aggressive, but I do say that they are examining specifically what military steps is necessary in order that uh, they may uh, prove to China and Russia that we're just not going to stay there indefinitely and be beat up and sacrifice ourselves. I think there's a firming up attitude, of which is a wholesome attitude. Well, we certainly appreciate your coming up and being with us tonight, sir, and thank you, sir. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Hardy Burt. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Edward J. Thigh, United States Senator from Minnesota. The worldwide interest in the forthcoming coronation of Queen Elizabeth II brings to mind that was in the closing days of the reign of England's last woman monarch, the stately Queen Victoria, that Longines presented to the world a new style in watches, the bracelet watch, or as we call it today, the wrist watch. Now these commemorative Longines coronation watches are the crowning achievement of a half a century of experience in the fabrication of wristwatches. Over these years, for excellence and elegance, Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes and 28 Gold Medal Awards. And for accuracy, more honors than any other timepiece. For the queen in your life, for the king at your side, for your prince or princess about to graduate from school, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines. For the superlative quality of a Longines watch, is equal only by its prestige and worldwide reputation. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Wetnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Wetnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, agency for Longines Wetnor watches. Enjoy Arthur Godfrey time, daytimes on the CBS television network.